Hey guys, today we're going to feature the Attack Pack Shooter's Belt. We're going to focus on some of the pros and cons of this particular item, as well as give you an unbiased representation of what we tend to look for. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the belt, shall we? First and foremost, the belt itself, the main section of webbing is Type 7 webbing. Type 7 webbing has a 7,000 pound pull force capacity, meaning it's not going to break on you and it's not going to fall apart on you. The actual belt itself has molly webbing on the outer perimeters. How is the molly created? That's really simple. What they've done is they take a piece of 3 quarter inch webbing, folded that webbing in half which gives you the perfect 3 8 inch section of molly webbing. Then in between each set they put high density stitching in between each one. Each molly section is one and a half inches apart which allows the end user to place exactly what type of kit they want on the belt. The back of the belt features a section of hook and loop material. This hook and loop material allows you to use an inner belt. So the belt stays on your person where everything needs to be. We've all been there. We've all seen it when we're moving around and our belt shifts and we go to grab a piece of kit that's on our belt and we have to move over or shift the belt back to where it needs to be. This hook and loop feature is really nice because it holds the belt stable and in place. This allows the end user to be able to run climb, or even operate successfully in a tactical environment. Another interesting feature that we have with the belt is the actual closures. This is what's referred to as the Cobra Buckle. The Cobra Buckle has two sections. It has a male and female end with brass clippings on the inside. The operator just... This belt is not going anywhere. Plus, it's high grade metal. If you take a look at the other belts that are actually out there on the market, they use simple plastic clip-on style closures, which tend to come apart or break easily on impacts. One other thing that I like about the belt is at the end, it has a D-ring. This allows the operator to hang a carabiner or whatever else they choose to use. A lot of people like to carry glow sticks or gloves. This feature is in front of the belt so it's easily accessible and ready to use. One feature I didn't like was this excess belt material. It's rolled up and tends to get bulky. So what I've done is just incorporate a couple of hair ties. You can use some elastic or any type of 550 tape. And what that'll do is it'll mold and flatten without getting caught in any equipment or getting in your way. The material that they make this stuff out of is high strength and it will not break. I want to give you guys an idea of what the belt can be. Here's an example of an operator's belt fully set up. I have a double mag pouch for pistol magazines, an M4 mag pouch for a spare magazine. I use this section for shotgun shells. I have a carabiner on the back end because I like to have my gloves in the back so they're not getting in the way. I have a general purpose pouch and my medical pouch on the side. I also have my firearm available with easy access. If you notice, there's still a lot of real estate available to put extra gear. With that said, I want to bring in a different belt altogether. This is a standard belt that we find most common with law enforcement and security. It's a little bit fatter than our attack pack belt, but what you're going to find right off the bat is that we have no inner lining for an inner belt, which means you have to use belt keepers. If you look at the belt buckles on this, these are plastic, and because they are plastic, you're gonna have a lot of wear and tear and you're gonna have to replace these. With the Cobra belt buckles, these are durable. They're gonna last you a lifetime. The pouches that we see on our standard duty belts are just slip and slide, which means your equipment is going to move on you every time you take the belt on or off. See the wobble? These belts prevent that from happening. One neat feature with the TAC packs is that you can customize your belt. You can have a multicam on multicam webbing, you can have a black inner belt with tan webbing. Attack Packs has a lot of different colors, a lot of different features that you can pick and choose from. It can be your design on your kit. There are several manufacturers out there building the same design of belt. However, they don't give you the same features that Attack Packs offers. For one, other belts are typically one color. I've seen a lot of belts by Eagle Industries or Ronin Tactics that do include the Cobra buckles. Some of them have a solid D-ring instead of the nylon D-ring which tends to make the belt heavier. But more importantly, 
price comes into factor here. A lot of these other belts I've seen go from about $129 all the way through to about $250. This particular belt is not only lightweight, durable, and strong, but the MSRP on this particular belt is $109.99, so it's a lot cheaper. These are also IDPA regulated, so you can use these for competition shoots if you so choose. And you can use them for a multitude of reasons. These belts are excellent for law enforcement, our tactical operators out there, airsofters, or anybody out there who wants to be the weekend warrior. This right here is not only durable, it'll last you a lifetime. It looks tacty cool, and it's easy on the pocketbook. A TAC pack is local in Denver, which means it's made in the USA. You can go directly to attackpacks.com listed in the description below to get a comprehensive listing of all the different products they have designed, available, and are ready to go. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and leave them in the comments. Please like us, definitely love us, and we hope to see you back soon.